Good evening, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Yes, we can. I can hear you. Excellent. Hello. Thank you. Yeah, I can hear you too. Awesome. Same here. Thank you. <clears throat> We've got a few people that are uh, got a little connection issue, so we're going to just kind of Take our time. There's no hurry at the moment to get everyone connected. My name is Omar Sevilla. This is Auto 56 or O56. This is, um, uh, let's see, Monday, Wednesday from 6.15 to 9.15. All right. Let's see here. <laughs> All right, so I got a got a pretty good sized group here. I may have some people who are looking to add the class. Um, like, uh, I don't know if you guys saw the message, but currently I do not have a um, open seat, but that might change in the next day or two. So uh, my, <clears throat> my recommendation to you is to stay plugged in and hopefully we can get you a spot here in the next couple of days. Um, I'll kind of go over what what is entailed in this class. Um, it's a little front heavy. So if if you're already worried about your workload, the beginning of this class might strain you a little bit. But um, I know you're all probably pretty uh, exceptional students. So I will not hold it against you if you uh, if you stay. In fact, I would appreciate it. So uh, it looks like we still got a couple people who are trying to get in. <clears throat> So my name is Omar Sevilla. I'll put in the chat here my name. And my email is osevilla at sdccd.edu. Um, some of you have emailed me on the email that was listed by the school, and that's my personal email. That wasn't supposed to be out there, so um, if I respond, it'll be through my district email address. Um, so that's uh, <clears throat> osavia at sdccd.edu. It's in the chat there, so you're welcome to copy that down now. Um, I check that email once a day and I should be able to respond to you within 24 hours. Um, so once again, my name is Omar Sevilla. I see some familiar faces. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, so this is the engines class. So we will be going into the lab, um, but we'll be going into the lab uh, eight students at a time. So, um, <laughs> We're going to have to kind of get organized in order to make that happen. We'll make sure that everybody is as safe as possible. Um, this COVID thing is a real thing, and we're trying to take as many precautions as possible because we want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. We all want to get back to normal as soon as possible. Um, so unfortunately, we're all making the sacrifice now. Um, hopefully, you're all doing well and your families have been safe and you're taking all the precautions yourselves. So um, so let's see what I got here. I'm gonna just share my personal story real quick before we get too deep into class stuff. Uh, like I said, my name's Omar Sevilla. I graduated from Ramona High School in 1997. So um, if you don't know where Ramona is, you might know where Mayor Mesa and Poway are. If you keep driving east, you run into a little town called Ramona. It used to be a little country town. Now it's pretty much a small city. Um, but I graduated there in 97. Um, my high school extracurricular was actually auto shop. So I used to compete in automotive repair. 
I used to go to contests, um, rebuild engines, and that's what I did instead of sports. I tried sports. It just wasn't for me. So, um, so when I graduated Ramona High, I was pretty lucky. In 1996, um, the government mandated OBD2. That's the Onboard Diagnostic Second Generation. Well, throughout high school, my shop teachers really, really pushed for us to learn the OBD2 system. So I graduated high school, I think I was 17 or 18 years old, and I understood how OBD2 worked. Um, I went to work at a dealership as a helper. And uh, by the time I was 21, I was a shop foreman, and I had guys twice my age that were working under me. Uh, because I knew the OBD2 system. I wasn't afraid of it. And a lot of the old timers were very resistant to the change in technology. So what kind of technology is coming down the pipe for you? Some of you guys, you're all different ages. Some of you are in your second career uh, or just exploring this as a hobby for, for, for when you're older. Some of you are probably fresh out of high school looking to do this for a living. Um, but what technology is coming down the pipe right now that's going to be your thing, that's going to make you stand out in a sea full of old timers? Um, what could that be? Could that be electric cars, electric powertrains? Tesla's got these advanced battery technologies, advanced uh, self-driving technology, um, electric motors, um, electrical power units, um, Fisker has a power unit that is a hybrid gas and um, electric motor generator that operates electric motors. Um, all these self-driving programs, every car manufacturer will have that mandated sometime soon. Um, and then you guys may have heard that there is some new um, legislation coming down in the state of California that by 2035 gas powered vehicles or ICE engines will no longer be sold in California. That's internal combustion engine, ICE. Um, so that might be, you know, any, any of those things might be your thing. So uh, I encourage you to stay plugged in to Merrimar College. We are all learning the new technology every day. As instructors, we're exposed to it first usually, and, um, and we learn it. So uh, we want to pass that information on to you so that you bring more value to our partners, our business partners. So um, that means for those of you who are looking to do this as a living, um, you will be able to hopefully make a connection with one of our business partners and say, hey, in Omar Sevilla's class, I learned these things. Um, now, <laughs> in about 13 years, right? 14 years in 2035, my class will be obsolete. Um, 056 uh, internal combustion engines, right? Uh, they will no longer be sold in the state of California. But that doesn't mean that they don't won't exist, right? They're still going to exist for another 100 years because many people right now are priced out of the electric car market because electric cars are just not suitable for them, um, not just when it comes to price, but maybe from a commuting aspect as well. Some of these electric cars have a range of 90 miles or 100 miles. So um, if you can't afford it, there's a chance that maybe the car won't suit your needs. If you're gonna make a car payment and you drive to Las Vegas on the regular um, and your car won't make it to Las Vegas on a tank of fuel, that could be a problem, right? So, so most of us are not affording Teslas. Many of us don't wanna drive a Nissan Leaf, right? So <clears throat> the market hasn't caught up with the needs, but by 2035, it might. So I encourage you to find the new technology that interests you, learn as much as you can about it. And, um, you know, I was, I was uh, pretty aggressive with my automotive experience. I bought my first house at 21 years old. Um, I don't know, you could probably still do that today, but it would take some very strict personal discipline and probably some, uh, some parents or somebody else at home to, to maybe house you until you're ready to do that. So um, the automotive industry has been good to me. I am a certified master technician. Um, I'm and I'm also an L1 advanced level specialist. And I have my G1, which is maintenance and light repair. Uh, and I have my A9, which is automotive diesel engines. Uh, I started teaching when I was 25 years old at Miramar College. 
so I've been teaching here since 2005. Um, so I guess this would be my 16th year, something like that. So um, I've been around a little while um, and I just wanna keep sharing the knowledge that I have with as many people as I can. And hopefully uh, you guys will be able to be successful in your goals. So with that being said, any questions for me personally or uh, career-wise questions? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, welcome once again, you're, uh, and guys, if I go too fast or something, you're welcome to interrupt me in the chat. Um, I will stop and address you. So if you put something in the chat box, um, you know, I'll finish my thought and then I'll jump into that chat box and make sure to respond to you. Um, so once again, my name's Omar Sevilla. This is Auto 56. Um, it's uh, engine, <clears throat> what is it? Engine diagnosis or engines and related systems. That's what it's called. Engines and related systems. They always change the names of the classes on me, so. All right, so here we are. We've got, I don't have the roster in front of me, but what I've done is I've written down the names that you have in your window. So if you are like sweet 56 baller, I'm probably not gonna mark you present. So if you have the, you have the ability to go to the top right of your window in, in Zoom, and then you should be able to click the option that says rename, um, and then you can put your uh, roster name in there if you don't mind. First or last name would be helpful. If you have a common name like John or Mike, please put your last name or at least your last initial. So if you guys could help me by updating your name on the screen there, mm -hmm. and I'll make sure to um, I'll make sure to uh, mark you as present for today and also keep track of you if you are um, looking to add the class. So let me take a quick picture of that just in case. And for those of you who have your cameras on, you guys are champions, thank you so much. I also teach high school during the day and I haven't seen another face um, since, <laughs> since last March. So this is kind of, uh, kind of nice. Um, so here's the deal with ads and drops. Uh, like I said, if you weren't on the call in the very beginning, um, the first couple of days are kind of hit and miss. Sometimes I have no shows. Sometimes I have people that say, you know what, I don't know if this is the time for me to take this class. So people will drop out uh, and then I'll have the ability to add people. Now we're capped at 16 students because of COVID. Now, if you have, if you've there should be a raise hand function um, under reactions. You can like raise your hand or do a thumbs up. If you have, if this is your first Miramar class, can you give me the thumbs up symbol? If this is your first class at Miramar? Okay, cool. All right. All right. I like the hearts too are nice. It's a sweet gesture. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so I have a couple of first timers. So I'll go ahead and cover this. Miramar College has special permission from the state to run their essential program courses. So automotive uh, repair um, and advanced transportation technology is considered an essential trade. So from the state, we have special permission to get you guys in the lab to do our training. Now, this is great for most of us, um, but the challenge is of course spreading COVID, right? Um, or anything else that might be going around. So we have some special rules and there's kind of a lot of uh, preliminary work before we start class. So um, the people who do not get that done by the end of the week, I'm gonna have to drop them and make room for students that are looking to add the class, okay? So we'll cover what those requirements are here in a few minutes, um, but I just wanna make sure that I make that clear. If you're not able to meet the COVID and safety requirements by the end of the week, um, I will go ahead and, um, and open those spots for other students, okay? Uh, let's see. Thank you. 
All right. Hey guys, so one of the things that's a good practice is to mute your microphone. Uh, unfortunately, I can't mute mine. I have a one-year-old and a five-year-old in the house. So if you hear something going on, nobody's hurt. I just have a one-year-old and a five-year-old, okay? So it'll just be like noises and screams and maybe things pounding and being thrown, but um, that's just how they play, right? <clears throat> so um, let's see here. Any questions on the ads, drops, or attendance? All right, so uh, somebody made a comment. No, guys, I will not require you to turn your cameras on, but it is appreciated if you do. It just kind of makes it um, mentally and psychologically when you're talking to a screen of black boxes, it kind of plays with your head. So um, if it's all good for you to turn your camera on and you don't mind and you're social like that, I, it's totally cool. If you're not, it's totally fine too. I understand like some people are in a dark room or they have stuff going on in the back. Like I get it, I'm working from home as well. I've been blessed with, uh, with a house and a wife that understand and, and, and I got a space in my room right now where I could work. Sometimes I'll be in my kitchen, sometimes I'll be on my patio. You might catch me in the garage, you might catch me in the lab at Miramar, okay? So the, the Zoom sessions are gonna be, I'll be in a different place every time based on how my schedule's working, so. Um, but thank you for asking, that was not sarcasm. And I understand that sometimes my personality might seem like I'm being serious or sarcastic. Um, I promise you, I'm always approachable, okay? And if I say something that seems out of line, uh, you can call me out on it and I will uh, apologize or, or restate my, my statement uh, in a more appropriate way. So I do my best to be uh, fair with everybody and uh, try not to be offensive, but I've worked in shops for, for my entire life. So sometimes it just happens, so. All right, anybody else have questions about the uh, ads, drops, attendance? Okay, very good, very good. <clears throat> so uh, if you guys could give me a thumbs up if you have seen the Canvas page, you've opened it up, looked at the modules, okay. Four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's cool, cool. Um, so awesome, if you have not done that, I'm gonna encourage you to do that now um, because in just a minute, I'm gonna start showing you some things on Canvas um, that we're gonna need to do straight away. Um, my goal tonight is not to have, on, have you on this call for three to four hours, even though you know it would be nice to just chat with you guys. Um, there's things to get done. So we only have 16 weeks and it goes by really, really fast. The older you get, the faster time goes. Um, I'm like 26 now. So time's starting to really go. Just kidding. I'm 42. Um, uh, I'm, com I'm going up on 43. Unless I'm 40. Let's see. I was born in 78, 88, 98, 08, 18, 19, 20, all right, we're not in September of 21 yet, so I'm still 42. I have to count now, see? Um, so the COVID deadline. So let's take a look at this COVID business. Uh, bear with me for one sec while I verify I'm on the correct screen. <clears throat> Let me put this in student view. Uh, Conrad, I see your question, and yes, so um, not to jump ahead for those of you who are new to the program, but SP2 and COVID certifications, uh, well, for sure the SP2 certifications will carry over if they are not expired, and I'll show you what that means here in just a minute. Um, as far as the COVID stuff, I need to have the signed um, 
documents as well as the quizzes that are on the website uh, to be done. So you guys may have done this stuff a couple of times. The assignments are the same. You're just going to need to blow through it. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about here. Um, I'm going to just start with the beginning of uh, Canvas here. Uh, let's see, I got to minimize this chat box. So if you guys just, uh, if you shoot me a chat, just hang tight, I'll get to it in a minute. Um, let's see, when you go to your courses or dashboard, it should show spring 2021, auto 56, uh, 56601 blended. This is the course that you guys should be looking at. When you click on that course, um, when you go home, it's going to just show you these modules. Um, so the first thing I want to show you here, and I'm not going to read you the syllabus because I don't think that's a valuable use of time, but I will just point out a couple of important things. On the left uh, map here or menu, if you scroll down to syllabus and click the syllabus, I don't have a file. It's just a page with the syllabus information. Um, it talks about the course. Um, this is where we would normally meet when we're on campus, S401. The course is called Engines and Related Systems. If you call this number, you're going to get the tool room at Miramar College. So if you call that number, uh, probably Jeff will answer or Sean or John. And then one of the, those guys will text or call me. Um, so sometimes your message might get lost in translation or, or they may get busy and forget or the message just might not get to me. So my recommendation, the best way to get a hold of me is to email me at osavia at sdccd.edu. All right. So um, if you need to see me, I'm going to update this for Monday, Wednesday um, from 5 to 6 p.m. Um, this will be the office hours that are available to you on Monday and Wednesday. So you'll, it'll, it'll be um, by appointment. So if you guys need to see me one-on-one -on -one for something, shoot me an email. I'll set up a Zoom. You and I can sit down, talk, do whatever we need to do to get whatever uh, situation on hand taken care of. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Moving along. Um, so we're talking about the blended learning course format. Um, so it talks about with the pandemic, we're not supposed to be bringing any materials to class. You guys should not be bringing cell phones, laptops, paper binders, anything like that. Uh, we are providing, we're supposed to be providing computers. Um, last semester, we ran a little short on computers. So I might have an alternative way to do that. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to use the school computers because they get disinfected every time they get turned in. They get sprayed down, wiped down, um, and charged ready for the next group of students. Um, so that's one of the deals that uh, is going on. As well as the computer deal, we're doing PPE. As normal, it's going to be pants, closed-toed shoes, safety glasses. Um, uh, so shorts are not allowed. But also, we're going to need uh, masks and gloves. Um, the gloves, <clears throat> everybody's required to bring their own. We will not provide the gloves. Um, and then the mask, everybody's required to wear a mask, even over their nose, over their mouth. You got to wear it properly. Now, um, who had the challenge of wearing your mask and it fogs up your glasses? I did for sure. Okay. So if that was you, um, I want you to know that on Amazon, my wife found some masks that are supposed to be uh, non-fogging masks. So I haven't tried them yet, but she bought me some. Um, so I'm going to give them a shot and let you know how that goes. Um, or you can look yourself on Amazon, see if you can find them. Okay. So that does exist. So that's required PPE. PPE stands for Personal Protective Equipment. Okay. Um, here's the course description. Um, so pretty much we're learning about ice or internal combustion engines. Um, my goal is to give you enough information so that when you take the ASC A1 certification test, you're able to uh, pass and get ASC certified. 
ASC Automotive Service Excellence is the um, foundation. It's a national organization that um, accredits and, and um, certifies automotive technicians across the United States. There are other organizations around the world that do this work, um, but if you hold an ASC certification in the industry in the United States, um, that should be recognized by most of your shops. Okay. So we're gonna cover most of the things in this course objectives. Okay, I'm, I'm, Like I said, I'm not gonna read all of this to you guys. I'm just trying to go over, just kind of go over it real quick. Um, and then we're gonna move on to the COVID stuff. Um, student learning outcomes, remove and replace timing belts, verify correct camshaft timing, um, assemble the engine block. Now I don't have enough engines for everybody to rebuild an engine themselves in a distance learning uh, environment. Uh, so what I'm doing is I am building labs with each step of um, building an engine uh, at each station. So there'll be a station where you're gonna remove and install the crankshaft. There's gonna be a station where you're gonna remove and install pistons. There'll be a station where you install cylinder heads, a station where you're gonna remove and install timing chain. There'll be a station where you adjust valves, a station where you remove and replace a, a water pump, a uh, an oil pump. Um, so that's how we're gonna have to do it this time around. Um, beyond the uh, assignments on Canvas, um, you're gonna have to demonstrate competency on in-class examinations. So each one of the labs I set up in class, um, to me, that's an assessment. I'm looking to see, um, if you are able to do the task um, and how much effort you need in that task, okay? Uh, how much more effort or practice you would need to complete that task. Um, and then at the end of the semester, <clears throat> to get an A, you're gonna need a thousand points. Um, it's a thousand point scale, right? So there will be a thousand points available. In fact, because of the way I structured my class, there's actually more than a thousand points available. Um, but I'm going to stop counting at a thousand points. So, um, so this is the scale uh, for the grades. Um, so, so this is the scale for grades, um, and the class is going to be in uh, including lecture with or without visual aids online learning environments, group problem solving. So there's not really gonna be group stuff because we're supposed to be working independently in the lab. Um, I will be doing demonstrations. In fact, I have some great YouTube videos. Um, excuse me, they're on Vimeo. I'm gonna to try to put them on YouTube so that you guys can see them. Um, computer assisted or other self-paced instruction, um, instructor led lectures in labs, and then Zoom, Zoom sessions. So on some of the Zoom sessions, we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, ASC style practice questions. So the book you're going to need is called the, um, it's the Fundamentals of Automotive Technology to your subscription uh, by a company called CDX, okay? This is a coupon code. If I get new information on CDX, I will update it here and send out an announcement or notification to you. Um, because I always want my students to get the best deal possible. Um, it's expensive to be an automotive technician. Uh, buying books is the cheap part. I used to spend about $1,000 a month on tools. So I had my mortgage payment and my tool payment. Um, my, my mortgage payment was about two thirds, excuse me, my tool payment was about two thirds of my mortgage payment. So I was spending about 200 to $250 a week on tools. Um, so that's just how expensive it is. And nowadays, maybe you don't need to because the owners will provide tools. Um, but when you own your own tools, you're never waiting for anybody else. So there's pros and cons. Um, here's some more PPE requirements. Uh, this is an optional book. Oh, this is a test booklet uh, by Del Mar. Um, and then there was an optional book somewhere. You, you're, oh, here's the recommended text right here. <clears throat> so there's ASE test prep. So I encourage you guys to buy the ASE test prep books 
or there's other like online practice style tests. So I'm gonna stop there for a moment. I had two questions. Somebody, um, uh, I'm gonna jump back to that. I think Elias raised his hand and then I had a question in the chat. Um, so I'm gonna answer the question in the chat first. It um, was, um, what type of engines are we going to build? Um, so the current engines, were the, the engines we're gonna use predominantly are Toyota, uh, I think the 3.0 V6 uh, dual overhead cams. Um, I forgot the engine code. It's the 2GR, 2GRE Toyota engine. So they're, they put those in the Forerunner as well as the Avalon. Um, and then Lexus uses a version of that model as well. <clears throat> um, I will have some Honda engines that we'll be doing different procedures on. Um, and I might have an older Dodge or Chevy engine or components from Dodge or Chevy pushrod engines that we'll be learning some procedures on. Um, we will also be working on Toyotas and Ford, uh, and I have a couple of Fords where we'll be doing some engine testing on. Um, so a lot of this class is diagnosing an engine. I like to start this class in diagnosing engines because um, when you are doing a compression test, you'll be able to um, see the test, see it fail, and then do a leak down test, identify where the leak's coming from. And then when we go in the engine lab, you'll be able to see the actual components that could potentially cause that problem. So I kind of do the class backwards um, compared to the book and a lot of other teachers. And I've had some pretty good success with it. I feel like students understand more. Um, so uh, I hope I answered your question on that. Um, I got a couple other questions coming in, so let's be patient. Uh, Elias was next. Elias, what was your question? Hmm. Hello, Professor. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, go ahead. Uh, can you show us a picture of the book? There is no picture of the book. The book is pure 100% online. So yes, I can show you that in just a minute. Um, I'll show you the book in just a minute. Um, what you need to do, <clears throat> we work really hard with the publisher of this book to get you guys the best deal. Um, yeah. Uh, Shada there put the book there. That's the ISBN number. That is the book. Um, I think we're still on edition five. We might be on six or seven. Um, but if you contact the Merrimar College bookstore, tell them what class you're in and tell them that's the ISBN number you have, they should make that available to you. Now, if you are, have, is this, if this is a class that is part of your sequence, if you've taken electrical transmissions, manual transmissions, um, or one of the other classes, this book is the same book. Um, this book is a little more expensive than a traditional college book, but it covers eight classes at Miramar College. So I think it's, I think last I heard it was maybe $300. Um, it might be a lot less now, but it's going to cover eight classes. When okay. I was a student <clears throat> at Miramar College, I remember spending $200 a class on books. Um, so this is definitely a better deal for you. And it's an online access code. You get two years of online access um, and you can download the documents and anything that you need from the website. So you can also download the audio and you can download the, uh, the actual textbook. Um, <clears throat> there's a version of that you can see. So I'll share you with you what the book looks like in just a moment. All right, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, how many books do you need? You just need one book. Um, so the one book is the CDX uh, book. It's the Automotive Fundamentals. And um, the, oh, I'm sorry, Shada. I see that's the Engine Repes Repair Test A1, Del Mar ISBN. That is actually a study guide for if you're going to take the ASC. I'll put the link in there for the correct book here in just a minute. Okay, so bear with me one minute. Um, uh, so yeah, so it looks like most of the other questions are the book. So let me jump back to my syllabus here.
That's the recommended text. The required text is this one here. So this is the information. Where's my chat box go? Oh, my link didn't work. Oh, did it work? Oh yeah, all the information there. Uh, so there's a lot of information here. Um, it's the required text is ISBN 9781284140514. Fundamentals of Automotive Technology Second Educational Bundle Access Card to FAT Online. So it's a task sheet manual. Um, they need a coupon code and ISBN. So if this information, if you guys call the bookstore or call this number, and something's not correct, I will get you the updated stuff. But this is, should be the right stuff here. It changes uh, pretty frequently. So sometimes in the middle of a semester, they'll change the book information. Um, so as soon as I have new book information, like I said, I'll send out everything that you need. So the Miramar Bookstore, can you all see that in the chat? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, so this is the homepage for the community college district. Um, so if you go to the Miramar, if you go to the Miramar College Bookstore, Bookstore Services, San Diego Community College. We work really hard to make sure that our school and our publisher uh, are selling you the correct version of the book. So if you buy it on Amazon or some other online source, even if you go to the CDX website and buy it independently, your code that you purchase may not connect with our Canvas course. So it's very, very important that you select the book that's um, that's specified in uh, my class. So select the campus team, automotive technology. You guys, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great, thank you. So you would go here to the Merrimar College bookstore. So it's bookstore.sdccd.edu slash Merrimar. I'll put this in the chat as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's the link for the bookstore. Okay, so we're going to select automotive technology. And then the course is 056. We're not 56 T's the Toyota and Honda class. We're just 56. And then this is Omar Sevilla. <clears throat> All right, so we add that, and then you got to click get your book list. There was something tricky about this, so I'm going to just go through it for you guys. Um, textbook agreement. This is the agreement, the return policy, refund policy. Returns must be postmarked. By checking this box, I agree to the terms and conditions. Textbooks cannot be found at this time. Okay, so that means I need to work on that. So I'm gonna put a uh, check with bookstore or textbook. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there with the textbook conversation. Um, this way, we're not just kind of beating a dead horse. Um, what I'll do is that is supposed to be the book and you're supposed to be able to get it through that website I just showed you. So what I'm going to do is tomorrow morning, I'll verify it. So look for an email sometime tomorrow morning uh, before lunch and I will get you that information, okay? 
Sound good, everyone? Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Awesome. All right. So let me jump back to the syllabus real quick. Was there another question there? Uh, okay, cool. All right. So share screen. All right, so there was the textbook and supplies, recommended text, attendance requirements. Pretty much you guys are young adults. The expectation is that you're able to attend every class. This um, format is kind of difficult because um, on <clears throat> Monday nights and Wednesday nights, I'm gonna end up having a, a A team and a B team or a group A or a group B. And what's gonna happen is when group A is in the lab on Mondays, group B will have to be watching either a pre-recorded Zoom lesson on Monday or waiting for me to log into Zoom on Monday at the same time I'm in the lab. Um, so um, keep an eye out for messages. I will always email you as soon as I can um, within a few hours before class about um, the plan for the day. Um, but once we get rolling, you'll definitely know whether you're going to be in the lab or at home on, on Mondays or Wednesdays. So um, by next Monday, we should know that for sure. Um, so it is my discretion to withdraw a student after an ad drop deadline. Um, really, it's this, guys. If I'm not having any communication with you, I'm going to drop you because I need to make room for other students who want the class. If um, and then if you're a non performer, I may also drop you because there are other students who want to do this class who will perform and actually get a passing grade. So um, I want to make sure that um, we're leaving these seats for students who are going to do the work. Okay, uh, cheating and plagiarism. Um, we're not doing any major projects that will, um, uh, you know, that you can plagiarize. Um, but you can copy answers uh, and, and workbook stuff from students. So um, I encourage you to do your best work. And if you don't understand something, you really need to ask for help. Um, that's the difference between somebody who's going to get stuck at $15 an hour in this industry and somebody who's going to make six figures in this industry. If you really understand the, 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 the systems and you understand the components, uh, you know how to handle, service, and repair the components, you're really gonna do well. Um, <clears throat> there's a code of conduct, um, you know, really has to do with behavior. Most people know how they're supposed to behave in a classroom. Um, I, I have kind of a zero tolerance for people who are um, being distractions or, or uh, threatening behavior. So I, I will make sure to eliminate the, the, the person uh, from the classroom space. Uh, online, it's easy. I can just remove them from the call. Uh, in real life, uh, I just call the school police and they take care of it uh, because I'm too old to take care of it myself. Now I'm 42. I'd hurt my back or something. So anyhow, enough of that. Mostly I'm joking, guys. I think that everyone's pretty responsible. Uh, if there's an incident, though, we do call the school police because um, it's not our job to, to handle a drunk person or an irrational person. If there's any students that require special accommodations, uh, please just shoot me an email, um, send me a private chat, let me know what your accommodation is. I'll make a note here so that I don't forget and I'll do my best to meet your accommodation. Uh, I try to be accommodating. I try to <clears throat> provide all of the accomm accommodations that I can provide before they even get asked for. So. Um, a lot of the things that I'm doing today, uh, it may not seem like it, but they're, they're different types of strategies we use for, for uh, different accommodations. So uh, courses requiring strenuous physical activity. You will be required to lift heavy engine parts. A cylinder head for a, for a Chevy engine that I have weighs about 75 to 80 pounds. Um, and we're in a COVID situation. <laughs> So you're not really supposed to have a partner, but in that case, um, you know, the, the 30 seconds of somebody standing next to you lifting a cylinder head uh, is less risky uh, and, and brings uh, 
less risk than you dropping an 80 pound cylinder head on your foot. So, um, so we just use common sense when it comes to that stuff. Uh, no late works accepted. Um, the instructor reserves the right to change the schedule below without prior no notice. Um, so I usually have, a, uh, I always accept late work policy, but the problem is um, last semester with the online format, it really kind of messed up some students. So we're gonna to try to adhere to the de uh, due dates as best we can. Um, now, if I see something where like 80% of the students aren't doing it because I just overloaded them, of course, I'm gonna make the adjustments as necessary, but please do your best to stay on task all the time. Um, you're not in high school anymore, this is college. Um, and if you're prepared, you're gonna learn more because you're gonna know what I'm talking about when you come to class, so. You see there's a line there that says NATEF task sheets. Um, those are the lab sheets that I'm gonna be setting up stations for uh, at the school. We're supposed to be doing 95% of the priority one assignments, 80% of the priority two assignments and 50% of the priority three assignments. The challenge is in a COVID situation, um, we may not have all of the resources to do all of that. So like, removing and installing an engine probably isn't going to happen because it'll never get done uh, with 16 students in the amount of time that I have. Usually I put a group of four or five people on that pro type of project and it can get uh, done in two nights, right? So um, we want to make sure that we're uh, doing as much as we can, uh, the valuable stuff that you can take with you that we can do within a reasonable amount of time. Uh, remember guys, if there's any questions, throw them in the chat. Um, I have a schedule here. This schedule is from last semester and then um, I didn't finish it. So the schedule kind of got messed up last semester. So what I'm gonna do is I'll update this. Uh, it goes by weeks. So this is week one, week two, week three, and so on. Um, so uh, by Wednesday, that should be updated and you guys will be able to project what's coming up. Uh, and what's due for each week, okay? All right, so that's the syllabus. Any questions on the syllabus? I know I said I wasn't gonna read the whole thing, but I guess it's a lot of information. I just wanna make sure I touch base on the most important items. All right, if there are no questions, the next item that I needed to talk about was um, Canvas here. If we go to modules, it kind of shows us how the class is broken down. So right now, this is the Zoom link invitation. So if you log into Canvas, you'll always be able to get to this class. These are all the scheduled times. I did not erase or delete the uh, holidays. So. Um, if it's a holiday, the date might be projected. Um, you know, if you're in the class and there's nobody there for, for 10 minutes, um, it might be a holiday. So just double check your calendar. There's the meeting ID and password there. <clears throat> so that is um, the Canvas page, excuse me, the Zoom page. Okay, so the next item here is the COVID uh, safe lab practices. So this is going to be our focus tonight um, is COVID. So, <clears throat> so this is going to take a little time here. This is going to take a little time for you to go through each one of these images. Um, these are all PDFs. They're all information about COVID. Now, <clears throat> My wife's in the medical industry and we have family that uh, are like emergency room, they are emergency room doctors. And uh, COVID's a real thing, it's changing, it's a real threat. And some people, it, it's pretty uh, serious. So our goal is to not spread it to other people or contract it ourselves. And I think the biggest thing that we need to recognize is we might be carrying COVID um, and we may not ever know because we don't have any symptoms. Um, and that's, that's the dangerous part about this virus. So 
this uh, assignment is about information having to do with COVID. Some of you may have done this. So here's the deal. Um, all of the assignments here with paper clips, these are things that you need to read with the paper clips. When you're done reviewing those items, there's a quiz for safe lab practices. And there's another quiz for safe lab practices. One's overall system basics and system basics. Um, and then there's an assignment for correct usage of chemicals. This is a document that you're gonna fill out and submit it. Um, you're gonna have to submit an image of it or fill it out electronically. And then service and reception delivery process, you'll need to fill that out electronically and submit the document. Um, and then th this will also be worth 10 points and I'm updating the due dates here uh, tonight. I didn't do it before class because I ran out of time. Um, and then the COVID-19 lab process assessment, right? So what is the process of entering the lab? You guys are gonna need to go in through the back door, get your temperature check, sign in, fill out the questionnaire, tell them that, you, that you're truthfully telling them that you haven't had any symptoms. Um, so that's the deal. Um, and then here's a, uh, three videos, coronavirus, what you need to know, how to improve your surgical mask fit, uh, and cleaning and disinfecting community spaces. So um, these are the things that we all, we've all done this training. Um, you're all required to do it. Um, these quizzes and assignments should be a slam dunk if you've done it before. Um, and then understanding COVID-19 risks. So these are just uh, like PDF documents. And what you need to do is just fill these out electronically. Some of these you might have to print and sign them. Like this one's a print, uh, you have to print the document, sign it, and then scan it and send it back to me. Okay, so you're going to have to go down and check all the boxes that you understand everything. Okay, um, this is to CYA. What's CYA class? Anybody know what CYA is? Cover your end. That's right. Cover your rear end, right? Um, so that's what this is all about. Um, so, <clears throat> so the COVID lab safety practices, that's what's up there. So there are one, two, three quizzes and four documents you need to get done. Okay. So that's going to take you a good chunk of time. So I'm going to give you guys some time tonight to work on that. Um, the next thing on the uh, deal here is automotive service safety and automotive service pollution prevention. These are the SP2 exams. So SP2 is a program or website that we use um, for safety requirements by, the, uh, by OSHA. Let's see if I remember my log in here. <clears throat> see if I remember my college login. Ah, uh, it worked. Let's see, is this my college account? Merrimar College, perfect. All right, let me go home. Um, your screen will look different than mine because I have all of these different courses because I'm an admin, um, but you're gonna be completing the Automotive Service Safety course and the Automotive Service Pollution Prevention course. Um, these two courses here um, are pretty much basic safety that you're gonna encounter in any wor uh, industrial workspace, okay? So when you get a certificate, let's see if I even have, I don't have certificates. All my certificates are on my other account. I can go to admin. Is there somebody in here who has valid certificates who doesn't mind me sharing a certificate? I, I believe I have a certificate uh, last what's your semester. Name? I, I'm Liam sorry, Cullen. I can't see your screen. What, That's what's fine. Your name? Liam Cullen, L-I-A-M-C-U-L-L-E-N. Right, let's search for Liam. 
So I can go to Liam's account and I can look at Liam's uh, certificates. Oh, here's one right here. Pops up as a PDF. Rotate that. And you guys can see that it looks like. So there's Liam's certificate. So down here, it says Liam's certificate is valid through August of 2021. Um, so that's for automotive service pollution prevention. Um, and then this one is automotive service safety, good through August, 2021. This class is over in May. So Liam is good to go on the SP2. So on those assignments, Liam, you're just gonna need to upload a copy of this. Copy. Okay. Um, so if your assignment, excuse me, if your certificate expires before May 29th, I think is the last day of the semester, um, you, you'll need to retake the exam. Okay, any questions on that? Now, what's going to happen is many of you already have access to SP2. If you do not have access to SP2, I'm going to have to create an account for you. So tonight, uh, when I'm done with the class and I excuse everyone, um, you're going to need to stay on the line so that I can help you get the um, <clears throat> get access to the SP2 website. Okay. So the due date for both of those is going to be Friday. Friday, I believe is February 5th. Is that correct? Yes. All right, all right. So February 5th is uh, Friday. Your goal for Friday should be to complete this COVID-19 safe lab practices and complete safety requirements, automotive service safety, automotive service pollution prevention. Once you have completed both of these boxes, I will be able to assign you to group A and group B, so you'll be permitted on campus. If you are not able to complete both of these by next Friday, there's a possibility I can drop you. Um, and I would only do that if I'm not seeing any progress. If you just are like one thing left and we talk and you're like, hey, I can finish it right now, I'm gonna let you finish it. But uh, if, if by Friday you're not done or uh, don't have significant uh, progress, I'm gonna have to open up the space for another student, okay? So the deadline for both of these will be Friday, February 5th. Any questions on that? And I'll be updating these um, due dates uh, after this class. Questions? All right. Now, if you are an overachiever, if you are an overachiever, There's this last box down here. Um, this last box is the ASE course pretest. It's 61 points. Um, this is the this is what your final exam is going to look like. So um, I'm going to make this due uh, before class on Monday. The reason we do a pretest is so that at the end of the semester, when you're like, this teacher didn't teach me squat, I can pull up your pretest and I can pull up your final and I can say, well, I taught you the answer to these three questions if you only did three questions better. Um, but typically, what we see is students that have uh, zero experience in automotive will usually get 20 to 30 percent on a pretest. Um, and a, a students that do the work and study 
uh, will get 80 to 90% on the final exam. So um, if, if you are applying yourself, there's no reason you can't do well on the final. The ASE pretest is gonna give you a snapshot of what the final looks like, but it's also going to give you, uh, what do they call it? Uh, a checkpoint to say, hey, okay, this is where I am. Let's see how well I am at the end of the semester. And every chapter, there's a pretest and a post test. This is the pretest for the entire course. Okay. Any questions on the pretest? The pretest cannot uh, hurt your grade. Okay. So it's not going to count against you. Just FYI. Does that apply to all the, the chapter pretests? This pretest covers all of the chapters. Right, but you said for each individual chapter, there's going to be a pre and post test. The pre test will never hurt your grade. The okay. post test goes directly into your grade. Got it. Thank you. Right. So on chapter 12, for example, you're going to do a pre test just to kind of see where your knowledge is. And then at the end of the chapter, you're going to do a post test. And that's what's going to go in the grade book. Understood. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Elias, what's your question? Uh, when is this due? Okay, so I will update the uh, assignments here. It just takes a minute. I'm not a fan of Canvas because it takes so long to update things. Um, but the COVID requirements are due on Friday, February 5th. See right here? Yeah. All of these, all of these will say February 5th before the end of the night. Okay. All right. Um, and the SP2 safety requirements will also all be due on February 5th. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the pretest before class on Monday. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I have a question real quick. So yes. everything that is due Friday and before next Monday, they don't require the textbook, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Now, I know sometimes students... Um, <clears throat> Students are still waiting for a check, maybe from financial aid or, or a check from somewhere to get their book. Um, I would encourage you to do whatever it takes to get your book as soon as possible. Because like I said, this class, the first four or five weeks are front loaded pretty heavily. Um, so if you do not have your book by, by the beginning of the second week, um, there's going, you're, you're gonna have some challenges. Um, I'm going to see tonight if I can update that book information in the syllabus and find out what's going on with the bookstore's website. Um, uh, yesterday it was good. Today it's not. So I got to figure out what's going on there. Um, maybe they sold everything or maybe, uh, I, I don't know. Um, but we definitely want to be on top of it. The sooner you get your book, the better. If you are telling me you got to wait till the 15th to get your paycheck, to buy the book, borrow a credit card, do something. I know that being in college is hard financially, um, but you gotta be creative. Um, I had a mentor one time and he asked me, <laughs> he asked me, I have, he said, I have a $68,000 Lexus down in the parking lot. If I told you, you could have that Lexus for $600, would you come up with $600? And what was my answer? Yeah. Yeah, of course, right? So this book is gonna be a couple hundred bucks, 200, $300. This book is the, one of the keys to your career that is gonna earn you at least $50,000 a year, easy $50,000 a year. Um, so, uh, you know, w w why would you let one paycheck hold up, hold that up? You know what I mean? So, so get creative, find a way. Um, there's got to be somebody in your circle that can help you out, especially if you're responsible. Um, if you're stuck, you're stuck. I'm going to encourage you to just do it one way or another. Um, but uh, I'm not a fan of using credit cards, but this would be a circumstance where it's kind of one of those things you got to just have the book, right? You're not going to start a trip to Las Vegas with an empty tank of gas. 
you shouldn't be starting any class at Miramar College with notebook. So, okay. So I will, like I said, tonight, my tasks are to get the book information um, and then update the due date and update the schedule on the syllabus. All right. Did I miss anything? Okay, so it looks like there's financial aid for textbooks as well. Uh, Conrad, you shared that with everyone. Is there a special application that you fill out for that? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a moment. Conrad, you're muted on uh, the thing there, my dude. Conrad, I, yeah, I think you were muted. We were not able to hear you. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, last semester, when I filled out all my financial aid paperwork, Part of it was for textbooks and supplies. And even when I was going to pay for my books, because it didn't look like everything was working, I got an email saying, don't pay for your textbook. You have to do it this way. There's financial aid. So um, I don't remember exactly where it is or how, but I know that it's there. Um, I believe I got it from, from the, uh, the Miramar website. Okay. Okay. So the website is there's so much information. It's hard to find things, but if you, uh, if you're having, if you put in an, a serious effort and you're still having trouble finding something, shoot me an email. I'll take a few minutes to see if I can find it and share links with you. Um, I always do what I can to help you guys out. Um, right now, you know, if you are a recent high school graduate, there's the San Diego promise. You should be able to get through two years of Miramar College at no cost to you. Uh, there's so many other financial aid opportunities. Um, and then next week, I'm going to be sharing the, um, I'll have a box on Canvas that's called Opportunities. And this will include um, job opportunities. It'll include um, scholarship opportunities. See, even though you're in college and maybe some of you um, are a little older, or some of you don't think you qualify, there's scholarships for everything. So sometimes investing two or three hours uh, in filling out a scholarship application, you could win $500, $1,000, $1,500 uh, for a scholarship. And that scholarship would only be, you know, a couple hours worth of investment in time. So, um, so it's, I'll have that box available for you guys to see. And um, I post that stuff every time it comes available to me. So, all right. So thanks for sharing, Conrad. I appreciate that. Um, the last thing I was going to share with you guys is, let me see if I can find it in my email here. Let's see here. There's a new Wi-Fi password. All right, so the, I'm going to put this in the chat here. So this is going to be Merrimar Spring 2021. Okay, so that's what the Wi-Fi password should be. Um, it did not specify capitals, so I just put all lowercase. Okay, so if you want to write that down, 
That'll be the Wi-Fi password for when you're on campus. And then while I was doing that, I think I saw the updated book information came through today or yesterday. Let me make sure this is, oh no, that's for the Ford website. I had a question about text. Um, I'm listening. I don't have the Del Mar book, but I have the Motor Age A1. Actually, I have the whole set for, for the tests. Is that okay? Yeah, totally. So the whole idea with the tests is you want to be able to practice, right? So, um, so when you have the ASC test booklet, you can actually see the questions and practice the questions um, free of charge because you own the books, right? So I even encourage you, there's some websites that do like practice ASE tests. Um, in fact, now that we're talking about it, uh, ASE tests dot, ASE test prep, Dot com. I think the accounts were like $35 a year and you can practice your ASC tests online over and over. Um, for COVID, he gave me a bunch of free accounts uh, when COVID first started back in March. Um, I don't think they're good anymore, but what I'll do is I'll reach out to the owner of the website and ask him if he's still doing that. Um, if not, I'll see if I can get a discount code for you guys if you want to register for that and practice your ASC test. So ASC, like I said, was Automotive Service Excellence. Um, so for those of you who've maybe completed a class at Miramar, uh, when you're done with the class, it's kind of the best time to take an ASC test because the information is still fresh in your head. Um, so when you go to an ASC test, you can pass the test but you only become officially certified uh, if you have two years of work experience or more. Um, now, if you went to a high school that had an automotive program that was certified by ASE, um, or if you complete Miramar College, two years of a high school program or two years of a college program counts as one year of work experience um, if it's a certified program. So Miramar College, we are certified. So if you graduate Miramar College uh, through our general program, um, you get one years of work experience just for attending uh, our school. Um, and then if you are attending our school and doing an internship, you can be done with your two years before you graduate. So just that's how that works, okay. Um, so I will follow up on the ASC testing stuff, but any of those resources are great resources to have. The trick to those is you gotta use them, right? So you gotta set, a, set aside time, 20, 30 minutes a day of studying test questions. Um, and then the secret to testing is you gotta know what every single word in the question means, okay? Um, uh, besides my automotive career, I was in the financial services career uh, when I was younger. And um, I had, I just let it expire actually in August, uh, my uh, California uh, insurance license. So I was licensed to sell uh, financial uh, insurance products, uh, uh, annuities, life insurance, um, health insurance, uh, those types of products, as well as investments. Um, and those were some really hard tests for me to pass. I, I failed the test three times before I passed. So um, once I took the time to learn the definitions of all of the words is when I was actually able to pass. So um, just a little food for thought there. So any other questions before I uh, move on here? All right. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call attendance of the students that I have on my list that, um, that checked in tonight. Um, and if you hear your name and you know what you need to do, you don't have any questions, you've already you're already registered for SP2, you're good to go. Um, if you hear your name 
and you still need to register for SP2, stay on the line and I'll get you registered. If you don't hear your name, stay on the line so I can get you uh, on my list. Okay, was that clear enough instructions? I think I'm a so. little tongue tied here. I've been talking all day on the computer. So um, <laughs> usually the beginning of the semester is like that for me. Okay, I have Riley Pruitt. All right. So that's, so uh, Justin, is that the correct? Oh, oh, my bad. I was just uh, responding to the previous quite, or thing about, uh, Got my it. Bad. Okay, is, is Riley Pruitt on the line? No. Okay, what about Victor Lopez? Hi. All right, Victor, so I got you present. Uh, do you need to get into SP2? Mm, no. You already have that? Yes. Okay, so you'll need to just upload your uh, your certificates and you should be good to go. Oh, actually, uh, I'm going to do it tonight. Okay. I, I don't, yes. It's so my first, so, okay. So you know what to do? Yes. Perfect. Thank you, Victor. Uh, Saiz Gabriel? I'm here. All right, and that's the correct name for my roster? Uh, yeah, uh, Gabriel's first name. Oh, Gabriel, got it. Okay, so I'll put a <clears throat> comma there. Thank you, sir. Um, Elijah, Elijah V. Sure. All right, Elijah, so yeah. I've got uh, you present, okay. Uh, Elias? Oh, uh, here. De La Paz, all right. Justin? Here. Justin? Katungal? Yes, sir. Katungal? How do, you, how do you pronounce your last uh, name, Justin? Katungal, just as you said. Perfect. Okay, Katungal. Uh, Sue Sampras? Yeah, here. You call me Sam, and then it's Shu for the last name. Shu. Okay, and then so Sam Shu. Got yep. it. Thank you, Sam, for the correction. Um, Teddy? I had somebody check in as Teddy Chumyuk. Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, Teddy Chomek. Chomek, got it, okay. Um, and Teddy, if you need to get logged into SP2, stay on the line and I'll get your account made. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, Liam, Liam C. Yep, that is me. There's Liam, all right, Liam, same thing if you need uh, to Get on SP2, I'm, stay on the line. Uh, Haiti, go. welcome you. back. Good to see you. All right. And then I, I have a quick have... question, quick question. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I try to log into that SP2 website and it says it doesn't recognize my um, email. So my certificates are from like 2018. And you That's okay. So, so what we'll valid? do is I'll update your uh, information. So stay on the line. We'll get you all updated and then you can redo the tests. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I have a, I think it's Julian. Yeah, here. Julian Alvarenga. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Cool. Okay, awesome, Julian. Thank you. The first time I think the, the words were all put together on your first and last name, and I wasn't sure if it was Julian or Julie because the screen was blacked out. So thank you for clearing that up. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. No, that, I wrote it down sloppy too. So I'm like, what did I write? Okay. Uh, Tran, Tuan Tran? Yep, you got it right. Perfect. All right. And then Warren Cordell? I'm here. Warren Conrad, you mean? Uh, Warren Conrad? Yeah. Okay. Again, that was probably my sloppy writing. No, it's all good. Okay. Uh, Zachary Gibbs. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, sounds good. Awesome, thank you. And then I have Shata. I am here. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Shata, if you have a, is this the name that's on my roster? S-H-O-T. Shota, Shota, my name, yes, Shota. Shota. 
Perfect. Thank you, Shota. And then I have, uh, let's see, I think it's Jared. Do I have a Jared in here? Okay, what about Di Diarno? Di, Di De Niro? Oh, yeah. Day. Yeah, I'm here, uh, sir. Okay, I pronounced your name okay? Oh, yeah. You can call me Day. Day? Got it. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's see here. I got something in the chat. Yeah, guys, the, uh, the SP2s are valid for 12 months. So, okay. Uh, thank you all for being on here. I'm going to give you guys the rest of the evening to get caught, to get done with that COVID stuff and the SP2 stuff. Um, if I missed your name, stay on the line. If you need help logging into SP2, stay on the line. I'll get through you guys as quickly as possible. All right. Thank you all. If you're good to go, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Professor. Thank you. Thank you. See you good Wednesday. Night. Bye bye. All right. Let's see. Cordell. Let's see. Cordell Nieves. Cordell. Nieves. All right, Cordell. I got you. Uh, so, anybody else? I missed your name on the attendance. Uh, yeah, me. Oh, Mr. Abuye. Yeah. Sorry. Uh. I, I put in the chat, uh, probably it's Jacob Aboimi. Oh, I wrote Jacob Sloppy, so I couldn't figure it out. My bad. Uh, okay, Jacob. All right, Jacob, I got you. Aboimi. Thank you. Aboye. Okay, Aboye. A-Y-A-Y. -Y. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. All right, anybody else? Good deal. Good deal. Okay, so I'm gonna assume that the rest of you need to get access to SP2, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Cool, yes. is there anybody yeah. who needs something besides SP2? Okay, is there anybody who has an account, they, like, like Haiti, you just need access to your account? All right, so I'm gonna start with Haiti here. So let me go to, all right, so keep an eye on the chat because I'm going to, um, let's see here. So let's see here. Okay, so that'll be your username and password, Haiti, okay? And then you can update it once you get in there. Okay. All Let right, I'm gonna work try. my way down the screen if that's okay with everybody. So I got a... Uh... Wait, <laughs> it says in Valerie, you invalid user information what you, okay just uh, let me go back sure. to my screen maybe i didn't hit ah save changes try it now okay did, all in word right uh yeah okay. so julian have you had an account with sp2 before no this is my first time 
First time. Okay, so your name on the screen is uh, is the way you spell it normally? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I need to go to add a student. Whoa, I can't. Oh. Six. Our spring twenty twenty one. And then I'm going to add a student. So Julian, let's see here. All right. Yeah, guys, just hang tight. I'm working on this. Uh, so let's see. Let's see if Julian's works. Julian, uh, so the top one is your username that I created and the bottom one would be your password. I think you might be able to update it. So Haiti, no luck you said, it looks like. Okay, and then Teddy, modules posted on my camera. Just need to get registered. So Teddy, SP2 account. I would. Yeah. So my SP2 account, um, I had it a few years ago. I took my certs. I just need to. I probably re-register my account. Would your name be spelled the same way? T. -E -E? It would probably be uh, Theodora. T H E O D O R. All right, so let's see what it says here. Okay, so they changed the way SP2 works. So let's mm -hmm. see. Because before you would use a PIN number. Now you need a username and password, so I have to create that. Okay. So I gotta just create the username. Julian, great, thank you. Haiti, I'll come back to you one sec. All right, let's see here. So we're going to...
right, so let's see, Teddy. Let's see if we can go. All righty. So that'll be your username, and then that'll be your password. Okay, let me try that. All right, and then let's see. Day, you're next. Hang in there. I'm going through as fast as I can, guys. Haiti, let me see what happened with yours. You're at sp2.org, Haiti. app.sp2.org. SP2. Did you use the link on? Uh... Yeah, it looks the same. You use the link okay. on camera. Okay, cool. All right, logging in. So no caps or anything like that? No. Oh, just... one word? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to share with me an email address and I can try to update that with an email address? Sure. Just send it in a private chat so you don't get spam. I know all these people on here are going to want to spam you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm working on the app on my phone. Oh, no worries. Okay. So day, uh, are you trying to re log in or are you new to SP2? Oh, I'm new to SP2. Okay, cool. Uh, can you send me an email address that I can use as your username in a private chat? How would I send it as a private chat? Yeah, I don't see it either. Oh, you don't? Are you guys on the phone app? Is that why? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on the phone. Mm -hmm. Share screen, stop recording. Mute. Yeah. So when you hit chat, so, so is there a little thing that says everyone? Ah, ooh, uh, I got you. So if you click the little drop down yeah, arrow next to the word the everyone, yeah. it should okay. be a list of mm -hmm. people with me on it. I got you. Did you see it, Day? Yep, seen it, sir. All right. Okay. All right, so let's try this here. Technology is so crazy to me. Just like that. Okay, Haiti, try it now. Okay. Is it did you send me something else? Is it the same thing? So you'll use your email as your username now and then try the same password. Okay. All right. A uh, day, the email address name is different than the name on here. Which one's on my roster? Which name is on my roster? So I mark you present. Mm. No. Still nothing? Hmm. No. All right, uh, let me finish with Day's account real quick and then we'll try Haiti again here.
Thank you, sir. No problem. All right, so let's see here. All right, they give that a shot. Katie, I'm spelling your name right, correct? Yeah, I put forgot password and it says my email is not associated to the account. Try the forgot password thing now and see what happens. I added, your, I added your email as the email address on your account. Okay. So let's see if it works now. Okay, the password has been sent to my email. Okay. All right. We're cooking with buyer. All right. All right. All right, Cordell, you are next. Uh, if you can just send me a chat, a private chat with your email address, Cordell. And then uh, the name that you want showing on your certificate, please. Okay, I'm all set. All right, Haiti. Awesome job. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Uh, Teddy, did that work for you? Yes, I just wanted to uh, talk about the uh, my position on the wait list and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so but I, can I think wait. You, came in, you came in a few minutes late, correct? Yes. Yeah. So what? Um, so what? My suggestion is is arrive these first couple of days, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, any. I haven't even done attendance yet, but if I have any no shows, they get dropped. And you, are you on the wait list officially? Yes. Okay. So then um, you will be in order of priority uh, of the wait list. So, okay. So as soon as windows open up, I will send you an ad code as soon as a window opens up. Um, okay. So I can add you like two weeks. We got like two weeks to add you. So if you're showing up mm -hmm. every day, you're going to maintain your spot. Okay. The only issue uh, is the modules I can't get on Canvas. So we're going to do our best to handle that. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll have to make an exception uh, because mm -hmm. of the situation. Um, so just if you keep showing up, get your SP2s done, you know, participate in the classes, uh, and then you just won't be able to come to campus until the COVID stuff is taken care of. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. You're welcome, thanks. All right, getting through this, guys. I'm moving as fast as I can.
All right, Cordell. So that would be your username and password that I created. If you can give it a shot, let me know if you're able to log in. Day, did that work out for you? Oh, yeah, it did. Awesome. That's how I was just going to let you know. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You're excused if you're good to right, go. Good. Awesome, man. See you on Wednesday. Have a good night. You too. All right. All right. So let's see. Uh, I've got Sampra, Sue, Shu, Sam, Shu. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, sorry. I got to no, get used to that. Uh, can you shoot me your email address, please? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Can I just type in the chat? Um, yeah. What you mean? Yeah, because then I okay. could just copy paste it. And then what name do you, how do you want your name to show up on your certificate? The same as my current one, Sampras Shoe. Okay, cool. All right, Cordell, good news. Thanks, buddy. All right, so that would be... That would be your username, and that's what I put for your password. Thanks, Cordell. Elias and Zachary, if you guys can just shoot shoot me your email and I will create accounts for you. Gotcha, I'll send it to you. Thank you. All right, I'm in. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll see you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Uh, wait, what did you, uh, you need us to send again? Say that so so Zachary and Elias, if you if you just go in the chat and send me a private chat with your email address, and then I can create an account for you. <laughs> 